Hello everybody and welcome to the 63rd episode of the Alien vs. Predator Galaxy podcast. This is your regular host Corporal Hicks and joining me is my usual partner in crime, Rich Stop. Hello again everyone. And we're back for a kind of AVP kind of Predator themed episode. We managed to, um, I'd say we'd snagged a Predator himself. <laughs> and it is Ian Foyer, welcome to the episode today. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. We'll learn a little bit more about um, Ian's Predatorisms over the um over the rest of the podcast but before we do you know start chatting predator and nerding out and uh learning more about your involvement with the series i was hoping you could just tell our listeners a little bit more about yourself outside of predator who are you and what do you do i'm actually a uh, former professional soccer player football player uh in england and uh played for West Ham United, Luton Town, as well as the uh, U.S. national team and Olympic team. And I retired in 2007 and only own my own uh, goalkeeping academy and uh, work with numerous organizations from the national team to universities to the L.A. Galaxy in terms of coaching goalkeepers. So, yeah, become a coach. And uh, we have a little tradition on the podcast, and that is we love to hear about the first time our guests saw the franchise uh, we're going to be chatting about. So do you remember the first time you ever saw a Predator film? I did, yeah. It was the original with Schwarzenegger, and uh, I was immediately drawn to it. Uh, it was just such a cool, you know, cool, cool movie, and just the, the whole Predator. And he's just a badass, and he looks cool, and dreadlocks and everything. It was just a cool, uh, pretty, pretty cool movie. Did you catch that in the cinema, or was that, was it, that a video or a DVD thing? Um, it was more, I think, at home. Yeah, it was definitely at home. I don't know what it, what it was, VHS, uh, you know, DVD, whatever. But, uh, yeah, I don't remember seeing it in the, in the cinema because I think I might have been. What year was that? I probably was a little too young. but 86, I think. I remember. Uh, I would have been old enough. Or it was yeah, 87. I, 87. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I remember seeing it home. But, yeah, it just it fascinated me. It was a great movie. I suppose I probably should have mentioned quite specifically that you did actually work on AVP Requiem. You know, you were a predator. Uh-huh. But, you know, before you did actually work on, on Requiem, had you also seen the first AVP film? I did. It was kind of a, a funny coincidence. I uh, I was I was sitting at home and, and all of a sudden got a, a call from uh, this guy named Mike. And he's like, and I knew Mike from the soccer world. As I became friends just via seeing him at a soccer game. I didn't even know what he did or anything like that. And you know, he was like, hey, have you seen any of the Alien vs. Predator movies and the Predator stuff? And uh, coincidentally, I said, last week I saw the AVP uh, movie and I said, yeah, I go, why? He goes, well, we're looking to uh, cast for a, for a Predator. And I'm like, wait, what do you, I didn't even know what he did. I was like, what do you do? And he's, oh, I'm, you know, high up in the, in the, in the Fox uh, corporate world and all that. And he goes, you do, you'd be perfect. He goes, the guy that originally did it has the same build and the same kind of uh, background and everything. He goes, that's what we're looking for is, you know, like very athletic, tall, you know, kind of basketball build type of, you know, people to do the suit. And, and you have to be also disciplined enough to be able to do certain things. And I was like, you know, sure, let's do it. And I was like, this is the craziest phone call I think I've ever had. Um, so it was the first thing I've ever done in, in that capacity. And, uh, it was, it was something that I, I'm, I'm happy I said yes to, cause it was a pretty cool thing to have. Your credit wasn't massively specific. It, it yeah. was uh, additional predator. Uh, I think yeah, you actually yeah. played a couple, uh, a couple of them. So I was hoping you could tell yeah. us, our listeners, you know, um, a little about the scenes you actually performed in. I played, well, what happened was they shot the movie with the original guy, had to do a bunch of reshoots and i guess he couldn't get a work permit or something i can't i don't the whole thing so it was about two weeks of uh of uh green screen and 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 stuff like that so i yeah i played pretty much every predator that was in that movie you know one scene or the other and uh yeah i just did all the scenes that i guess they had to make up and and you know that weren't right on the first take or they had to add in or anything like that so yeah, I got killed a few times, um, and uh, yeah, I survived in the end. You know, so <laughs> in terms of which scenes, I, I got it's off. My, I mean, it was it was actually more than I thought it would be when they first said we're just doing a few reshoots. It ended up being like you know maybe 20 scenes or something like that. So it was kind of cool. It was, it was a few, you know, from the opening scene where he's sitting in his chair. And, pushing all the buttons and seeing his buddy get killed to the other scene where he's at his, uh, I think he's at his desk, you know, skinning a, uh, an alien skull and he gets killed bone girl that got killed there or something. Um, yeah, I did all those, but yeah, I mean, I did about probably about 20 scenes. And overall, how did you find the experience of working on Requiem? It was, God, 
uh, amazing from difficult. It's just a mental difficult. I mean, the helmet weighs, you know, 40 pounds. And at first you're like, oh, no big deal. You know, I'm a strong, I'm six, seven, you know, 240 pounds. You know, I'm an athlete. I can take, you know, and all of a sudden after about an hour, this helmet on your neck starts going, wait a minute, what's, what's going on here? It feels like someone's sitting on top of your head. So there was the mental discipline that I had a, a newfound respect for. And, you know, when I look back at the other Predator movies and, you know, what Ian White did and all those, you know, legends and all that, it's like, whoa, look. I got a lot more respect. Not that I didn't have it before, but just even more so because it is mentally tough. But at the same time, it's like you're the predator. You know, it's like, how cool is that? It's like my son is my kids are like, whoa, my dad's the predator. And it's like, well, that's pretty cool. So I got through it. and It was uh, definitely mental, mentally challenging, but uh, definitely worth it. Yeah, I've, I've heard from the creature suit actors that that can be quite a challenge just to, to keep your wits about you when, when dealing with the big, heavy, stuffy suit. Must be very claustrophobic as well. Oh, God. Well, Tom Woodruff, he's amazing. Um, he did, There was a scene where the Pred alien was kind of shedding, if you remember it. It took about to start, yeah. maybe it was two seconds. It was about two seconds, three seconds max in the movie. He did that scene. He, he got in a catcher's pose, okay? And they put this cheesecloth on him with the gel that makes it look all slimy. And he's literally sat there for 30 minutes without moving. And I went, my knees, number one, would have exploded. My head would have exploded just out of just the pain from my knees. And he just sat there and he did it. And I was like, wow, I know how much that just mentally he had to get into almost like a, a trance, you know. And then he shed and they did it once and then they had to do it again. And I was like, wow, how did you just mentally get through that one? You know, and he was he was just like, yeah, I just get a mental calmness. I just do it. So, yeah, those are the things that people don't realize. And then you see the movie and it's like it lasted two seconds. You know? <laughs> and it was like, OK, so it was interesting. Yeah. And when you were in AVPR, you had a kind of a limited pool of reference material to, to work with as far as none. Yeah. <laughs> the performance of the Predator. But I was wondering if, if you could talk a little bit about how you prepared to play the Predator. I mean, did you go back and watch Kevin Peter Hall in the older Predator films or did you do yeah, any training with Ian White? No, I didn't get to see Ian at all. I wish I could have because, you know, obviously he's, he's the one. But Tom gave me a great rundown and because I, I literally was like Monday, um, I got asked on Tuesday, I went to the studios where they make the suits and they're like, I just want you to try it on, see if it fits. And uh, when I tried it on, they were like, oh, it fits perfect. It's like you actually look, I don't know, because I guess my legs are in my upper body's i don't know whatever they just it's fit perfect so and that that was that was the existing suit that ian wired yeah that was correct. the existing one um so yeah i just tried that on and then like on thursday we were shooting so i didn't have time but yeah i did go back and watch adp and you know the original predator and all that and uh it was intimidating because it was just me and like you know 15 cameras and all this money being spent every second and you want to do a good job and i remember after the first scene tom and a couple of the producers were like dude you're doing great this is like amazing we, we never thought someone who's never done this before could come in and do it that well again i just listened to details that they told me and i did them and i was like all right hopefully i'm hopefully i'm getting this you know but in terms of references no i didn't get to to, to talk or to much you know except the day of shooting so were you working with second unit then we're not working with the strauss brothers i worked with yeah, it was it was the brothers. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, it was them. Oh yeah, it was, uh, it was them. It was Tom Woodruff because there was alien shoots that they had to do as well. So it was all the as far as I know, the whole crew was there. Um, so yeah. Okay. And did um, the studio ADI guys? Did they have you do any sort of physical training and preparation for filming? No, I was. I'm still kind of not to sound arrogant, but I'm still kind of game fit right now. I've been six, you know, six, seven, 240, 235 my whole life. And I'm still the same weight and I still am physically active with all my coaching that I do. So it was, uh, physically it was fine. It was, it was the mental side that was, was definitely being an athlete help get, you know, as a player, you have to push through pain and push through certain things that are uncomfortable. So, you know, it was like, uh, just kind of stepping onto the field and doing that. So it helped a lot. I'm assuming you've, you've never actually done any sort of full body suit work like this in the past? Nope. The only acting I've done, uh, it's not even act, I worked, I did the, some of the soccer choreography on the movie Kicking and Screaming with Will Ferrell and uh, Robert Duvall. Right. Um, but other than that, no, I've never, this was the first thing. So talk about straight in the deep end. <laughs> 
speaking of football, soccer, uh, however you want to say it. Oh, I can say football. I prefer football, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm British, so it's, it's football to me. I know. Exactly. Me too. Yeah. Um... So, Requiem actually had a couple of TV spots that were all themed around football. Yeah. How involved in that were you in making that happen? Because I assume it was it was sort of your doing that resulted in, in the football theme. Well, I joked about it, and I don't know whether my joke was what pushed it to do it, but they actually did. We were shooting the movie, and, you know, Tom is, you know, giving me all these pointers and this and that. And uh, I go, oh, yeah, I remember the uh, the AVP where they did a, a spoof where they're playing cards, I think it was, right? Weren't they yeah, playing poker? Yeah. And, and, and the shower stuff as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I said, oh, that was kind of funny. I go, I said, that would be funny if we did a soccer one. And then I saw Tom's eyes light up. And he's like, oh, wait a minute. You know, and then nothing was really said. And then, you know, we did all the shoots. And a few months later, they call me up and they're like, hey, we're doing the, uh, the, the DVD release. Uh, for you know AVPR we want to shoot it and we want to do uh, soccer and I was just laughing I'm like going on are you kidding me that's perfect so the irony is what was really cool it was and you've probably seen it is it's, it's I'm taking penalty kicks on the alien mm. so now we go full circle and Tom is now going up because I play goalkeeper. Tom's like, okay, so how does a goalkeeper stand? And how does a, you know, how do they move? And this, and so I'm teaching Tom Woodruff, the legend from all the alien movies and everything, how to be a goalkeeper and how to stand and move and that. And I'm taking penalty kicks on him. And it's just, it was such a fun, it was just a one day shoot middle of downtown Los Angeles in a warehouse. But it was just so ironic that we did the soccer. So it was pretty fun. I think it was released. They told me it was going to be released during the FA Cup. I think that's about in right. In England. Yeah. And yeah, and the funniest part was the director, it wasn't the brothers for this one. It was it was had no clue about soccer, but he knew I played soccer in England. He's like, "Yeah, he goes, "Yeah, we're going to we're going to release it during the FA Cup." And uh I mean, I would go, "What?" He goes, "Yeah, during the FA Cup." I I go, "Do you mean the FA Cup?" <laughs> he goes, "Oh, is that what it's called?" And I was just laughing. I'm going, yeah, it's only the oldest cup in, in the history of football. You know what I mean? So it was kind of interesting. And it was just funny how it came full circle where I was, uh, I guess, the more knowledgeable on the topic, you know. And who was that, sorry? Uh, who was what? The director at the time. Uh, it was just the director for the shoot. I can't even remember. Oh, what was his name? I'd have to find out. I can't remember the name of the director. But it was all the, it was Tom and all the, the original guys. But it was just more of a, of a, a quick commercial type yeah. shoot. How awkward was it trying to play football in that suit? Oh, God. Well, we have the feet are um, actually, I don't know if, if I'm allowed to say it, but I think they're Oakley uh, shoes. And they, they put the foam around that looked like claws and all that stuff. So they're Oakley kind of slippers. But the ground had to be wet. So if you plant, I'm right footed. If I plant my left foot to kick, it's like you got to have good balance because you're going to slip. <laughs> so I couldn't quite get a full on, you know, laces through the ball kind of thing, you know, because one, the, the shoe's like 10 inches thick. But uh, looking at it, I think I got a pretty good kick considering, <laughs> you know, what I had to kick with. But no, it wasn't easy because you could barely see, you know, and you had to get the ball and I had to get it past. In fact, there is a funny, there was a, a camera, they wanted to get like a ball going kind of near the camera, like a 3D effect. Mm -hmm. So the, the director's like, you know, you think you can, and there was just this little small kind of hockey type goal. It was like five feet tall by six feet wide or something. And the alien's in there and he's like, okay, can you shoot it like kind of here to the right? I was like, sure. So I hit it. Boom. I nailed it. Hit it to the right. He's like, oh, that was good. What about, and then they put the camera behind and he goes, uh, you think you can get it like kind of near the camera? I was like, sure, I'll try. Got it near the camera. And then the director's eyes are just lighting up. And he goes, do you think you can hit it right at the camera? And I go, well, yeah, but I said, it, I can hit it, but it might break the camera. He goes, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. You just hit it right. Next one, I just smash this hit, and I go straight, hits the camera. A few pieces fly off the camera. <laughs> the cameraman's going, like, cussing and screaming. And the director's going, yes, perfect. Good job, buddy. You know, and I'm like, wait. Am I gonna have to pay for this camera now or something? <laughs> so it was like it was it was pretty funny and it was it was fun because I was in a situation during the movie where I kind of this is the first thing I did so everybody's giving me advice and doing that and then when we got to the soccer shoot it was nice because I had a little bit more not power or nothing but like knowledge on the mm -hmm. subject so I felt a little more confident and uh, like Ian White you both came from sports backgrounds rather than uh -huh. acting backgrounds. How did you find it yeah. adjusting from playing on the football field to being suited up in front of the camera? 
you know, there was a lot of parallels. Like I said, as a goalkeeper, I played through broken fingers, torn shoulder muscle, various injuries, and had to keep playing, chose to keep playing just a competition for, for spots. So there's that parallel. I don't think I could have done it if I didn't have that sporting background because I didn't know how mentally tough it was going into it where you just literally have to sit in a pose for an hour and a half. Um, I'm sure Ian White can vouch for this. There's one of the helmets where you see the teeth, you know, where there's no faceplate. That one, you can't see anything really, almost nothing. So they got to tighten it against your head pretty tight. And it's with this kind of metal, almost vice. So you put it on and it feels snug and you're, you know, you think it's fine. And all of a sudden you're in this heat warehouse and your head starts swelling. So you have this metal band around your forehead. It's almost like a Chinese torture and you're shooting and you think, okay, we got to be close to the end here and then I can take it off and rest. And it's just that scene just keeps going and going and going goes into another thing and you don't want to be the guy that says look i need a five minute break so i just kept going man it was it was mentally tough mentally tough did studio adi prepare you for for how it would be in the suits at all did they kind of like talk you through it i mean a little bit i think i kind of got it i just go i knew it would be claustrophobic and restricting and, and, and all those things and i just kind of prepare myself the best i can the first day was probably the toughest and then after that it was it was it was fine how long were you shooting I think it was like two and a half weeks. Okay, some fairly decent time. Yeah, it was good. I mean, it, like I said, I mean, I thought it was just going to be like a, a few, a few little scenes here and there, but it ended up being like a good, you know, good twenty scenes or so. Yeah, I, I some remember. Some of them lasted, you know, one second, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know if you were. I'm sure you remember this, Aaron. Uh, there's like a hidden special feature in the Alien Resurrection blu-ray where they have an interview with some of the the second alien suit guys other than tom and they just talk about how you know the thought of how cool it is being in an alien movie kind of kept them going through all the the hardship of just being in the suit well that definitely happened to me too the the thought of just saying all right cool i I was the predator that definitely helped i mean he's a cool creature (laughs) and uh when you think back to the time you spent working on avpr is there any particular memory that always stands out to you the most I think just in general, the whole the whole build up to it, and then just seeing the the what do you call it when they uh them when they show it the for the cast. God, I can't think right now. The um, your screening. The screening, yeah. Sorry, the the, the original screen that we saw all that that was kind of fun because it was the cast and crew and all the background. It was everybody, the background effects and this and that. My dad was the one that took me to the original Alien back in the day. And, and you know, he, he loves all those movies, the Predator movies. So it was kind of cool. So I brought him to the, the movie. And uh, during the movie, it was cool because, you know, some effect would come up, like even the opening effect where the AVPR comes up and then it explodes. And then some dude in the back's going, yeah, dude, that was me. You know, <laughs> so I guess he was a, you know, the graphics person or something. And, <laughs> the people that got killed in it they're sitting four rows over or something and you like look over and they're like oh yeah i just got killed my head just came off you know what i mean so it's kind of interesting i think that was probably the you know that and then also just the 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 the, the, the dvd shoot with with the soccer you know the football so that was kind of fun too yeah so one of the funny stories was when uh we had a five minute break we have a little flap where you have to uh, if you have to use the bathroom you don't have to take the whole suit off so uh one of the days i uh had to use the bathroom and walked in and there's this guy standing there peeing and uh just walked right up next to him started peeing looked over at him and i was like uh, hey buddy what's up and he just the look <laughs> on his face was priceless as uh he was just like where the hell's my camera when i need it and he wasn't even part of the predator uh group he was part of uh, another they were shooting something out of some other commercial or something at fox and it was uh it was pretty priceless i wish i would have had that on film brilliant love that so what did you think of the, the finished film then after you saw the screening in all honesty i think i liked avp better just because it was more i've always loved you know the pyramids and like i love like raiders of the lost ark and tomb Raider. i like all the tombs you know like that kind of movie mm-hmm. um so i guess the setting or all that you know i liked it i liked it it was good it was good i liked it it was you know it was entertaining and that i like i said i just think ADP I like maybe a little better in terms of where it was shot at and the, the story and all that. Yeah, the the contemporary settings are an issue some people have with the uh, Requiem anyway. So <laughs> I don't yeah, think you'd be exactly. alone in that assessment. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. 
And uh, another question we usually like to ask is about whether or not our guests took any keepsakes from their time working on the films. Do you have like a Predator mask set somewhere in your home or something? You know what? I, God, as much as I would have loved to, I didn't just because my first thing, I didn't want to like do the wrong thing and never get invited back kind of, you know, <laughs> so I was just playing it super. I was like, a, so I was like, not going to do it. I know possibly one or two others that might have but uh yeah well uh, you know it's it, no i didn't they gave me a uh, a replica mask um that i have sitting uh, in my closet um my wife won't let me put it uh, on top of the <laughs> fridge you know so it'll scare everybody so but yeah that was the that was cool though it's a it's a replica and it has a little light where the uh you know the the gun comes up and all that stuff so yeah, yeah it was pretty cool. cool you know but yeah that would be that would be a bit, uh, actual mask but i think they save them for like you know history museums and stuff like that a lot of stuff actually gets auctioned off as well i wouldn't be surprised if that ended up in a private seller's hands sure yeah i don't think i have the money to <laughs> no, compete with those people but yeah <laughs> God, it's, it's, they're ridiculously expensive i think there was one last last oh. year and i was looking at some of the prices from <laughs> i, was like, oh, I oh, wish i had crazy. the money to spend on this yeah what's really cool i just went to vegas and there's this one there's a few of them, but there's this one art dealer that uh, sells art, amazing art. And uh, but then they have these metal predator mm. things that people made out of um, of the junk and stuff. Kind of, yeah, yeah. But they're like really cool, really cool. They used to have a little one because they're over, over here. I don't know if it's like a mass a mass kind of design thing they do, but you see them in like gadget shops over here. Okay. And they do them in the in the various sizes. Uh, little desk sized ones all the way up to the life size. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. And they look brilliant, you know, the nuts and bolts and everything yeah. like that. Phenomenal. Right, okay, yeah, I've seen those, yeah. But yeah, the the the, the, the masks are pretty expensive. I've seen a couple. Your performance in Requiem, I believe, is the only time you've act, acted in a film. Obviously, yeah. your, your main career is is you know your football, Soccer, yeah. football, football stuff. Yeah. Did. Yep. Did you ever have any sort of opportunities after that to do more? Did you purposely decide not to pursue more career in film? The crazy thing is I'm, I would love to pursue something like that. So anybody out there looking, let me know. But <laughs> I did the Alien vs. Predator. And then about, I don't know, two months later, the same guy that contacted me to do the, uh, the Predator, he was asking if I could do another thing. And I was like, sure. And he goes, well, look, there's this one guy doing a suit and he's not quite pulling his weight yet. So, you know, if he doesn't by the next day or so, we'll, we'll call we'll call you out. And uh, he never called me back. He said, yeah, the guy was fine. I said, oh, by the way, what movie was it? He goes, Avatar. <laughs> so <laughs> that would have been a nice one out to, to get into, too. So, so yeah, he needed someone for the suit. But I guess the guy started figuring it out. But, yeah, I would love to keep doing it. And uh, you you probably just answered this, but, but since you performed in Requiem, Fox has made – uh, Predators back in 2010, and uh -huh. they're currently in post production on a fourth film, Predator, yeah. which comes out later this year. Yeah. Were you ever approached about performing in yeah. those ones? No, I wasn't. I think it was a whole new crew or, or directors, and then because I even spoke with Alec Gillis and that, and they said they're kind of, you know, not as involved. Um, I could be wrong in saying this, but, you know, at the time when we talked, uh, that was the theory, but uh, no, I haven't done it yet. So, but again, I would love to. And uh, out of curiosity, did you see the 2010 film Predators? And if so, what did you think of it? I didn't. No, I didn't. I wanted to, but uh, I'll sit down one time and, and, and probably watch them. But uh, I haven't. Just not through lack of want. It's just more just timing and uh, what we've gone through. Would you ever want to come back as as the Predator then, if if they were to do a fifth one? Oh, 100 percent, 100 percent. I would love to. And like I said, I just really enjoyed it. And again, just to that, it's such a epic character, you know. With so much tradition and story behind it that, uh, God, how could you not want to, you know? Exactly. But, yeah, I definitely want to do it. Well, that's actually all, all we've got for, uh, all the questions we've got for you. So, th you know, thank you for joining us. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to uh, come and talk to some nerds. But before we do sign <laughs> no off... No problem. <laughs> Before we do just disappear, is, is there anything that you'd like to say that I just uh, we haven't given you the opportunity to with uh, with the questions we've asked you? No, I just it's uh, I, I I saw you guys on Instagram and started following you. Um, I think it's cool what you're doing and uh, thank you. You know, keep up the good work and uh, you know let's stay in touch and go get from your, there. Hopefully, I can get another five. predator. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely uh, definitely love that. So brilliant. Well, thank you. Yeah, thanks for joining us, Ian. 
Of course, no problem. Anytime. Appreciate it. And thank you to everybody who's been listening. Uh, feel free to uh, leave any comments down below and any any extra questions you might have for Ian. We'll try and prod him, see if uh, we can uh, get some extra intel off of him in response to those. And you can find us online on all the socials. We're on Facebook as Alien vs Predator Galaxy. And we're on Twitter as at AVP Galaxy and Instagram as well as Alien First Predator Galaxy. You can find me personally as uh, at underscore Corporal Hicks on Twitter. Uh, I'm just RidgeTop21 on Twitter if you want to see my personal social media. And Ian, where can uh, folk find you online? I'm on Instagram at Ian Foyer, and my website is uh, Premier Goalkeeping Academy, so it's uh, pgka.co. Brilliant. So this has been Corporal Hicks. And RidgeTop. And Ian Foyer. Get into the chopper.